Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make some uh, shadow boxes. And the main one that I want to make is uh, this large one. I had thrifted this shadow box and um, I had in mind for this one to make it look like a, the outside of a cottage inside. And uh, I wanted to add some dried flowers and also some just uh, regular fake flowers. Uh, so what I wanted to do to this is, um, because it has that crushed velvet on the back, I thought about covering it with paper, but I want this stucco look. So um, I'm just layering some of this uh, joint compound on it uh, just to make it look like the outside of an old cottage. And now I'm making some trims. And if you'll notice here, this is uh, one of my high temp glue guns that I almost never use. So the glue that's coming out of this has been in there a while and it's turned brown. But I don't mind because I'm going to be painting some of this, these trims, or, or all of these trims. And some of these I don't use anyway. But I'm just kind of trying out different ones here to see which ones that I like. Now, any of these molds that I'm using today, um, if I can find them on Amazon, I will add those links in the description. So, my sister recently posted her first video. Tammy, that works with me, started her channel called Life Began in a Garden. And it's a lot about flowers and uh, gardening and uh, just all kinds of uh, some homesteading. But she's... Um, she made a flower press in her first one, and she pressed some of the most beautiful flowers, and I wanted to use some of those on this. And as soon as she gets her second video posted, which is uh, one where uh, the five of us girls, sisters, got together at her house to do some of the things that she does on her channel and it was just a fun time and so when she posts that one I'll also add that link in the description. Now I didn't mention that with the door I didn't have a mold large enough so what I ended up doing is just rolling out some of my dash clay and uh, and then cutting that shape out and I cut that extra window inside it to fit one of the smaller windows that I have. And for the trim down the sides of the door, I end up just cutting a popsicle in half and using that for that trim. Again, all of this will get painted anyway. And for the inside of the windows, I just found a magazine page that had um, the scenery from inside a house and put that behind the windows. And here I took some of the popsicle stick that I took, at, took off and... Um, Cut it with just an old pair of scissors that I didn't mind dulling and made a little shadow box to go on that window. Somehow I missed that footage. I actually lost a couple of areas of footage here. So I just glued that on the bottom with some hot glue. And then um, I started looking through Tammy's flower press book and found some of the flowers that I wanted to use in this. And although these are flat, I can make them work. And she actually shows other ways that you can dry flowers uh, where they won't, won't be flat, but I think the flat ones are gonna work fine on this. And this is some of the stickers that they had at the Dollar Tree. And so I just took some uh, French linen chalk paint and just lightly brushed over that to take off any of the shiny finish and now i'm just going to try to mimic the the yard here and i'm going underneath this with uh chocolate brown just because i want some depth of color here and for me it always works best if i start out with a dark color so i did this uh, color first and then and then I took some of the, my kudzu green from Dixie Belle and just kept layering that over the top until uh, I like the color that I ended up with. This would have been too bright and um, springy looking without that brown underneath so that's why I started with that and, and to deepen this color. And then I just kept um, once that dried, I just kind of kept adding 
uh, flowers to the front of the building and um, and added that flower pot with some flowers in it and I even glued some vine up around the house and um, I don't know if I got it in this video but I did put a piece of trim also at the top of the house and I also uh, cut out a piece of the air dry clay to make my steps with and with that one I did the same as I did on that door I took a ruler and just laid the edge of it against the clay while it was wet to make those little indentions so I did the same thing with those steps and then I just kind of kept gluing things in until I, I liked how full it was and I will say that when you're working with dried flowers, the flowers are very fragile at that point. But once you get them glued on, the strength is in the glue, not the, the flower itself. So it's not a problem, especially with this being inside a shadow box. Now these flowers that I'm gluing into the, to the um, window box is just some from um, a faux pick so these aren't dried flowers here they just have the look of dried flowers so you can mix them together now here is that flower press and uh, i'm just going back into it and finding some that i can use and i just love the look of this one uh, i think this was dried salvia and i know a lot of you have that in your in your flower garden and uh, it dries so pretty so i just kept adding flowers here and i'm not going to make you watch all that i just kind of filled in uh, underneath the window box and on the other side of the house with flowers and of course i put some of them in the little pot and then this one is just some pieces from a fake vine and or a fake stem and I'm just gluing it on to uh, look like a vine climbing up around the house and then I just painted the frame in the color most of you will guess buttercream and uh, and then did some distressed sanding on it and then this was finished here I'm just trimming these little leaves because I felt like the leaves were a little bit too large so i'm just going through and trimming some of those leaves down to make it look more natural and this is what it looked like finished and then uh, i'm going to be doing a couple of other shadow boxes but these will be christmas tree ornaments so i'm starting with these little stretched canvases from the dollar tree that i've already taken the canvas off of because all i need is this frame now a lot of times when i do a shadow box i will put two of these frames together but i don't need these to be deep so i'm not gonna put these together i'm just gonna do it just like this so what i did was put some um, cardboard on the back and added a um, hymnal page to uh, the inside of it so i just covered the front and the back actually i think i covered the front and the back with the hymnal page and then i stained my frame with some um, van dyke brown glaze uh, because i didn't want that raw wood look now here i am antiquing around the edges uh, but again, I end up adding a hymnal page also to the back of this so that the back of the ornament will look nice as well. So this one is going to be a nativity. And I'm starting out with two of the um, old style clothes pins. And you can get these at uh, the Dollar General, I think is where I got mine. Uh, but I stained just the head and neck area with that same Van Dyke brown glaze. And now I'm taking uh, a strip of, of the warm and natural fabric just so that I can build a little bit of uh, thickness to him. And I don't wrap, bother wrapping all the way down to the bottom. As a matter of fact, uh, I didn't mention that I cut these off. I didn't want them as long as they were. 
So I cut uh, one of them just a little bit shorter than the other so it can be Mary and the other one Joseph. And then for baby Jesus, all I need on it is a little um, wooden bead. And uh, I'll just kind of build the body on it because I don't need there to be much. And these I'm just kind of figuring out as I go. Um, it turns out that they're very easy to do. So just wrap a little bit of thickness around them. And, uh, and then the fabrics that I end up using on this, I think I use uh, some a little bit of printed fabric, but also some tea towel that I've coffee stained. And then I like to rip those so that it gives it more of a natural look. I wanted to put something printed underneath on, uh, on this one. This one is going to be Mary, and I guess this will be her, her robe, but then, uh, and then I'll do the little shawl thing that goes around. I'm not sure what that's called, but I'll do it with the, um, with the tea towel fabric that I've ripped. Again, these don't need to be perfect at all. Um, this is something that is very forgiving. Just kind of wrap until you like the look that you have. And um, and just hot glue when you feel like it. Like here, I felt like that bottom flared out too much. So I just added some hot glue inside and just kind of pinched it together. Because this part is going to be covered anyway. And I just needed that to not flare out so much. But if you guys haven't guessed by now, I really like doing shadow box ornaments. And I just think that they just add so much uh, character to an ornament to have some, um, some dimension like that. So now here I am just trying to figure out how I want to wrap her shawl. And as you can see, just starting it there at the back of her head and just kind of wrapping one side around at a time works perfectly. And if you need it to stay off her face on the side, then just add you a little dab of glue um, on the side of that bead and to keep it from going down in front of her face. Now, the song that's on this uh, book page is called God Is Here. And although I don't really know that song, I thought that was perfect because um, Jesus was born, God in the flesh, and I just thought that was really appropriate. So even though that title kind of got hidden in this, I cut the title out uh, and put it, uh, glued it to the top of this anyway. And that just kind of made it st stand out more because I ended up antiquing around the edges of it. So it just kind of added a little bit more dimension also. And now I'm adding Joseph's robe. And this is just a fabric that I felt like would go well. And um, I think we have our ideas in our head about the kind of fabric uh, that would have been used. Um, I'm not sure this is it, but when I see this finished, it looks to me like Mary and Joseph or the way I see them in my head. And now he needs his little headdress. And obviously, I do his a little bit different. I fold it in a triangle, and then the center of the folded edge, I glue just to the very top of his head so that he still has plenty of face showing. And then I bring that triangle down in the back and glue it, and then I wrap those sides around the back, if that makes sense. So here I've done that. And, and now I'm taking those sides and just kind of folding them somewhat to the back. It, you just kind of have to play with this. So I'm not wrapping the whole thing. I'm leaving some down on the sides. Uh, but that makes that little headdress, I think. Just make sure that when you pull that around the back, you also pull some down to the sides. And now I'm gluing a little bit beside his face so that it stays down against his face. And to me, that just looks like uh, what his headdress should look like. And then I just tied a piece of jute twine around it and put it in a knot in the back and glued that down. 
and then I just wrapped my Jesus up. And what I did was take a little strip of that warm and natural and wrapped around the bead, glued onto the bottom of the bead and wrapped it around. And now I'm just kind of playing with this and getting him wrapped where I feel like he's the size that he needs to be. And this is super simple. Just, just wrap everything to the back because that part's not going to be showing. And then I just glued everything in place. So this is an ornament that you have maybe a little bit of time in. It really didn't take that long, uh, but very little material in. And I just, I hate that there's not enough ornaments with faith. So anytime that I can find a new design for that, uh, then I do, um, I, I definitely want to have it in the store. And I decorate my tree with faith related items so uh, this is one that I'll be adding to my tree this year I always try to add a few uh, to make my tree fuller and fuller because I remember the year that I first started doing that uh, I couldn't find anything hardly in the store either it was just too commercialized looking uh, it was just it didn't look handmade at all or uh, I just couldn't find them anyway and so um, I did my tree a couple years and just could not come up with enough. And then once I started making them, I went back to that and I haven't had any problem. But I do like to make it fuller and fuller each year. And now I'm gluing the little title on here. And then, um, and then I take some of the jute trim from the Dollar Tree and go around uh, the frame. Because I didn't like those seams showing since they're kind of staggered seams it's just not a pretty look and i also took some of the little netted trim that you get at the dollar tree and glued some of that in around the bottom because i just wanted it to mimic the straw that was inside the stable now in hindsight i should have done that after i did the trim but i just took my trim down the sides uh, right up to it and kind of pushed it up underneath it some and it worked out fine and then I had a little plastic gold star that I that I put on the top of this and um, and then I added some jute string as the um, hanger and I just glued that to both of the outer top corners and here is where I added that song page to the back of this and antiqued around it and i just love how this one turned out i think that one like this is definitely going to have to go on my tree now this is before i added the star to the top but i'll show the reveal with the star again i think god is here is perfect for this little nativity and then I did another one with just Jesus. So um, I just added more of that netted trim on the bottom. And I thrifted both of the stamps that I'm using here. But you wouldn't have to uh, use these. You could even use a card in the background. I used some scrapbook paper on the back of that. But you could use a Christmas card. And I think it's great to, to make ornaments, uh, including your Christmas cards, that just seems like they pile up and you don't know what to do with them. And I forgot to mention that I put some of Tammy's pressed flowers in a frame here. And I just put some lace behind it. And I think that made a beautiful little framed art piece. Again, I hope that you'll check out my sister's new channel that I'll add in the description. And I know she would appreciate that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And God bless you and your family.